Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Kiddo Cave, waking up for a little bit of a actually very cold morning over here from a very endearing Helsinki, Finland. As always, wish you well to start off the week. Want to follow up on yesterday's analysis because why the fuck not? And well, mostly the higher time frames have been unchanged. This Bitcoin's been kind of playing on our range. And that actually means that the lower time frame mostly unchanged as well, which this which means that this video might be a little bit on the shorter side of which I got a lot of uh, a lot of feedback yesterday that people like the um, shorter videos. I can't promise that that's going to be par for the course going on into the future. It's just whatever content content there is and realistically at the end of the day uh, for myself it's really really important to get all my thoughts out because this is not like this channel is never going to be like a signals channel or like follow whatever the, I'm never even saying that this is financial advice or, or or even follow what I'm doing it's just I'm expressing what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and then you can decide for yourself if that's relevant to you or not and usually that's going to take a lot of time to explain because well <laughs> why the fuck not man anyways um as always uh i want to remind myself to talk about twitch i will be on twitch later today and actually running the new setup as well got the new capture card to be working which i'm really, really excited about so we're going to be playing some uh, elder scrolls if you have an account on there hit me up because i'm more than down to uh, to squad up and i think that that would be really really fun to get the community kind of involved in so uh so yeah check out the uh, link below at uh, crown crypto i believe it is on twitch Twitch. And of course, the crown trading application is uh, is live and uh, being updated with each and every passing week. Head on over to app.crowntrading.net. It's 100% free, 100% there for you to use. And uh, in fact, we'll probably actually have to be looking at it today because there is one big thing that I really want to be uh, bringing up. And yes, it is. It's right here in front of me. So you know what? I think with that said, it's time to wish you the best of the best and the haps of the haps because why the fuck not, man? It's always better to be wishing people well than not <laughs> anyways. And uh, I'm going to port you over here to the end of the live scene. Pressing that button for the teleportation. And there she is. That's actually the uh, first main page of the crown trading application. You can see that we got all sorts of new stuff going on right on over here. You can get your altcoin, beautiful altcoin <laughs> informations, news, calendar of, of, of actual economic events, which is actually quite useful, and um, and much, 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 much more uh, to come. If you can see over here on the left-hand side, actually, you can't see it all that well because it's cut off, but that's okay. Anyways, the focus is right now on the open interest that we see at uh, 1.3, sorry, 1.3 billion with a B. That's billion with a fucking B. And usually anytime we get over about a billion in open interest, that is when moves become um, not just uh, not just likely to happen, but extremely likely to happen to the point of like breaking big, 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 big structures. So keep that in mind as we kind of tie in everything here into the uh, into the overall analysis. But with that said, let's actually get on over to the uh, to the price action. And what do we see? Hold on, am I recording? Yes, I am recording, and my microphone's working. But I've changed around so many settings now that I don't know if this is gonna come out right or not. So, oh fuck me, man, I do not want to re-record this video. Anyways, um, looking at the daily right here. Uh, Bitcoin mostly just trading sideways. Actually, in fact, you know what? Instead of looking at the daily right now, let's go down to the lower time frames because realistically, very little has changed from the daily from yesterday to today. And uh, all Bitcoin has done has just basically traded uh, between the two blue boxes right here. Now, I am going to be 100% or I'm obviously wrong about what I said yesterday with waiting for a tick above our prior high at 95.79 to get that continuation play. This is why, as always, waiting for cl uh, closures on dildos is much more um, confidence inducing than just a tick above and at the end of the day you know that was a more aggressive play to be made and while i actually do still think that bitcoin has a chance to kind of revert back around and flip it um that was obviously not the continuation play that i was looking for so you know that is why i think it's really really important to explain my kind of, uh, my thoughts because you know if you know if they are going to be wrong you you know you're probably going to want to know why they're going to be wrong anyways as long as bitcoin is going inside within, within this range i actually still am bullishly biased here and i think that I can spend a little bit more time within this range however keeping in mind that the open interest is extremely high like like an outlierish high right now and we do see that historic volatility percentile on just about all time frames is really is really contracting quite uh, quite harshly here we do see that four hours coming all the way down i think three hours certainly down there as well it's contracting a little bit more two hour is uh, spiked but now on contraction phase and now probably probably uh, probably starting to really redline here but that's going to lead into contraction as well um that's going to align with us likely getting a move um i do think probably around uh the open of new york stock change a little bit later today um now we did get some volatility coming into the market yesterday night around cme's open which you know was which, which was kind of what we were alluding to yesterday that was the move that i was looking for re with regards to the lower time frame uh, historical volatility percentiles getting very very low now we kind of go back down into um and now we kind of go back down into remission phase once again and i do think that once new york stock change opens uh 
uh, for the trading day. We probably have a catalyst, not just because um, not just because it's you know it's a, it's a big market and it, it typically does see all the major moves. Um, and I know that people are going to disagree with that, but. It's just what the data shown. Um, but more importantly, we do see that there's some, you know, pretty big uh, macroeconomic events going on right now. Uh, Chinese markets are going to open up for the first time since declaring emergency for the coronavirus ordeal. And all jokes aside, with with regards to that, there's going to be some pretty hefty, um, some pretty hefty injections, I believe, by their government into their, uh, you know, into their stock market, which that's going to be a catalyst and then on top of that we're going to have the americans trading for the week open which is you know essentially the first week of february so that's also a nice little catalyst for moves as well and it's seeming like a perfect storm of events to get some big big bad price action as we do see that basically bitcoin is correlated with traditional markets and traditional markets are correlated with the world markets essentially as everyone i mean everyone's fucking connected to each other that's why you really don't want one per you really don't want to wish someone like poorly in a more esoteric sense because you know if you're all connected to each other and then someone else doing poorly is also you doing poorly as well. Anyways, that's enough of that sort of uh, talk for right now. I'll save the granola and hippie and uh, and uh, banana fucking bite talk. I don't even know where that's coming from. It's the oatmeal <laughs> for later, perhaps maybe on a Twitch stream later tonight. Um, but as it stands right now, you know, as long as Bitcoin goes sideways in this range, I am bullishly biased, but I do think that we can spend a little bit more time within this range. Uh, probably going to test a downside support once again, or actually we kind of got that downside support test already after testing the resistance up here. And now we're kind of back right smack dab in the middle of the range, which makes me believe that, you know, it's likely to ebb and flow a little bit more here. Sorry, it looks like my uh, my RSI pain is crushed all the way down. Let's actually crush this guy a little bit further down. Get this guy down right here. There we go. And the jewel is nice and shimmering right now. Anyways, um, lower time frames are mostly flip flopping, but that is going to likely align with another test down here to the lower end of the blue box territory, somewhere right around 9200 to 9250 ish region. Looks like we tested down to 9250 in the overnight session. So again, you know, if you're just playing the ranges here, which is essentially all I've been doing, although I was asleep for this one, uh, that's been phenomenally profitable. You know, don't need to know where the fucking price action is going to play to play these goddamn blue boxes. Anyways, um, I'm curious how the other lower time frames are shaping up right now. We do see two hour stokes popping back down as well. So they are in line with the three hour or sorry, the hourly, which is also in line with the three hour. We even see a trend line forming here as well, coming in all the way back from uh, June 27 or sorry, January 27th highs. And uh, four is going to be the doing the same thing as well. So I do think that that's going to align with another test to the downside support of this baby um does it break or not is the real question i i don't have a strong opinion on that my only strong opinions are if we get closes above or below these two preliminary blue boxes right here and i will even go i'll, I'll even make the same statement as i made uh yesterday as well um if bitcoin does tick above this prior high right here on this rejectionary ish dildo that you saw to 9619 on mexico uh if we just even tick above there probably going to be good, good for continuation as always though just like before probably want to see a close there if it's going to be a little bit more confidence in and same thing for the downside. Now, if we do initiate the upside move, I would look for a very quick move to about 98.50. That's the next relevant resistance that I do see, but it's really not a huge area as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's kind of out here in no man's land, um, the prior breakdown from, uh, from September essentially, but uh, getting back above there, would start to really um would start to really put a whole avalanche of emotion or sorry avalanche of uh, of effects into motion and i do believe that you know you'd probably get a small pull or you'd probably get a pullback there on the lower time frames but ultimately the real target would be after a move like that somewhere right around 10,100 to 10,300 so I, I do think that bitcoin probably is going to be eyeing um 10,000 uh, the question is do we have a do we have a major pullback first or is bitcoin going to get continuation from this uh from this range and of course to the downside and i'm i'm you know while i while i am like leaning bullish while Bitcoin's holding this area right here, it could just as easily break out to the downside. I'm not necessarily looking for it to happen as much, but if it did happen anywhere below 92.50 on a four hour total close or even a two hour total close, probably going to be good enough. It's going to destroy this, uh, sorry, destroy the higher lows even on the four hour right here. Then, yes, I would look for a move all the way back down to the blue box territory down here at about 8,900 and probably going to be looking for um, at the very least a medium time frame bounce from there in line with the daily 200 simple, which is now going to see the 21 expansion we would have the upside of it but there's a lot to be said about this chart going over here onto the daily right now and i really do think that kind of synthesizing down in or well synthesizing down by looking at the medium to higher time frames is going to kind of get rid of all of the fuckery going on in lower time frames right here and the reason why i say that is because you know if bitcoin did come back 
uh, if Bitcoin did come back down to this level, that would be considered a retest of, or sorry, it, it would be considered a test of the Golden Cross, in my opinion, as we just got the Golden Cross uh, freshly minted as of the last day of January. And we still have yet to really test any major areas. Yes, we did test a 10 simple. That will happen in very, very strong trading markets, but um, it would certainly not be out of question to test the 21, which actually is going to be crossing the upside of the 200 simple moon average, uh, probably later today at 7 p.m. Eastern time on closure. The reason why that is significant is because we also do see that there is a little bit of bearish divergence here present on the daily, which did it play out or not? I mean, this is a difficult question because we did see a move from basically 96 down to 91, which is a $500 move, which is about a 5% move at this, uh, at, you know, at this price point, a little bit more than that, which is significant. And you could certainly make the argument that that's already played out. But I would say that if this is actually not going to be what we're looking for, which would be notified by a, by, you know, by closure below that lower, to, uh, below that lower blue box at 92.50 ish region, then very, 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 very likely we will come down and test around the 21 exponential average, which is also in with with the 200 simple very common areas and that would be a more formal test i suppose also in line with our kind of uh middle of june or sorry middle of january highs and i'm like i keep on mixing up the j months um and uh, in fulfilling that uh, that divergence play, but the, the but the divergence play, I am very hesitant to kind of mark off as like a major one right here. It's only two drives and it's vi barely visible, um, and uh, I don't really have too much more to be made off of that. Now, what I can say though, in line with that, is we are going to see daily stokes cross the downside here, or, or assuming that that Bitcoin does, um, assuming that Bitcoin does close anywhere below 9,400 to end to close the day later today at uh, again 7 p.m. Eastern time. What's more important to me is actually the 12-hour stokes, which have been so fucking accurate and just blindly, tra blindly trading these for the last year and a half now. Uh, these are got the uh, these ones are opening down. So I do think that it's very, very likely we at the very least test the bottom side of the current range at about uh, 9200 to 9250. The question is if that breaks, if that breaks, then yes, I'd look for extension down to 8900 and very, 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 very likely a bounce there um, at the very least on low time frames. I do think we'd probably put, uh, put in a bounce on a medium time frame and most likely play out a um, or sorry, not not play out, but put in print in a um, uh, what's it called a, a higher low here on the daily. And that is all coming off the back of assuming that 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 it actually does break 9250 to the downside, which I'm not even saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying that if that happens, that would be my response to that price action. I do not believe that Bitcoin is going to break this area, you know, on the first pass uh, to the downside if Bitcoin were to head to the downside. But with all momentum also just pointing south and we, you know, we t to be fair, we do have bearish evidence present. Um, it is in the cards here for sure. Sure. The thing is, is that the higher time frames, the higher time frame that we go, the better Bitcoin does start to look. Going over here to the weekly, Bitcoin closed an incredibly strong weekly. I really, really like this one. And if it did have a pullback, I, you know, again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I probably would be looking to, I probably would be at the very least looking to play a bounce and probably do get another leg, of, uh, another try for continuation. There's many things going on in the weekly here that have been confirmed for the first time in more than half a year and and have had severe implications since the dawn of time essentially for this asset uh the big ones being we have gotten our first open and close above the yellow 21 expense treatment average with uh with yesterday's weekly i know people are going to say this one right here it well actually yes that one was our first one to be fair sorry i apologize it's not <laughs> got that one backwards um but my point is that we now have a confirmed positive slope for the first time with last with with yesterday's closure. That is more important to me. And slope plus price action being back above the yellow 20 minus between average has historically meant for Bitcoin since the dawn of time that we are in a long term upwards market. To take that one step further, we can look at the slope of the red 10 simple, which is you know a lower period moving average, of course. And that's actually even a, that, that's that's even having a more aggressive slope at this point in time, which is confirmed as of now. Or sorry, at confirmed as of yesterday. It was not before um, as you know, is, is still kind of in the midst of, uh, of, of cementing it. And I suppose you could say I, I need a better terminology for that, uh, you know, for like cementing in a dildo f formation, essentially. Uh, but, you know, you get the point. The next sort of tick in that same direction would be the 10 would get would be getting the 10 symbol across the upside of the 21. And more importantly, we do see that uh, momentum monsters on the weekly have confirmed changes of behavior here as well. We are seeing weekly stokes not just get back above the bearish control zone, but get above the same area that is that is that that has been held in, holding it down during intense bear markets. It's by no mistake that you saw uh, weekly stokes all below the bearish control zone during all of 2018 from January 2018 all 
all the way over here to March of 2019, quite literally encompassing the whole fucking bear market from start to finish, uh, you know, throughout that segment. And then more recently from September, uh, getting back down to this region, and then more recently getting back above right and over here. Remember, September was when Bitcoin officially reverted the weekly trend to being a downtrend by breaking about 10.3, which is where we got bearish right here. And now it's going to actually have a chance to not only confirm a change of behavior, or sorry, it's already confirmed the change of behavior on the stoke on, on weekly stokes but what it can also do is confirm a change of behavior on weekly trend by getting by printing a higher high it can do this two ways of course as always the best way is by closure above the past prior high which in this case would be 9550 i do believe if we even got a tick above uh basically like 10,000 it's very 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 likely to get fall through but as you saw with yet last night that's you know it's, it's always a little bit less um less uh, certain i suppose um and then on top of that we do have something very important happening over here on weekly rsi we've been we've been um uh, monitoring this for a long time now and anywhere uh sorry and, and and just kind of mark this area off on your own charts the 55 to 56 marker on the uh, 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 uh on weekly rsi i can't even get out my fucking words properly i probably need to take a break from caffeine because uh it's destroying my speech patterns which i need i need our trusty moderator uh rap to remind me because she's uh, sorry uh rap rap is always on my case about that anyways um Anyways, looking at this right here, we do see that uh, any time that Bitcoin's been in a bull market, it likes to rally off this region. We do see that uh, Bitcoin um, above the 55 to 56 marker is essentially, you know, is essentially your bull market macro term confirmed many times in Bitcoin's past. And uh, it's not perfect. It's not going to be like to the fucking dot, you know, to the fucking pixel. But you want to be looking at this over time and kind of monitoring it with the long term trend. And what we do see here is that uh, is that Bitcoin likes to play off that area in its bullish dumps during its bull markets. And it likes to sell off on that area on its uh, bearish pumps during its bear markets, you know, going all the way back to the genesis once again. Now, what I want to see coming into this week is not just that we've closed above this region long term which we already have done but what is very likely to happen is we very likely will come back down and test this blue box the next key critical point and i've got i've got a million fucking questions about this which just is i mean it's great man but the thing is is that you know i, I do these videos so that i can get all my thoughts out like you know if you private message me i'm not gonna there's if, if you private message me there's not gonna be anything that you ask in there that hasn't been said on here most likely um Anyways, uh, uh, anyways, um, looking at this right here, we do see that I, or sorry, <sighs> fucking goddamn it, man, <laughs> getting all jumbled up with my words. Apologies about that. No, it's annoying. Um, but but what's important here is that we probably do come back down and test this blue box at some point in time. That's likely to be the next big potential long term buy for myself. Um, assuming that you know we print a higher high first, confirm a higher high, and then come back down into it could happen this week, could happen next month, could happen, you know, in, in, in a few months, could happen next year. There's no time component of that. I just know that when that area comes back down and tests it, that's where your TA, and this is a fucking critical point right now, that's where your TA, the technical analysis, gives you a fucking edge to base a trade off of. And that doesn't mean that it's 100% going to be right. It just means that the statistics are on, your, are on your side. And because it's so close to being confirmed or denied, the risk that you put on a trade like that, assuming that you are managing risk in accordance with those principles, is going to be minimized. So it's it, you know, in my definition, a good trade. It's you know, it's it's worthwhile to um, it's worthwhile to uh, to to put some risk on for myself. Granted, my own preferences and everything, which is going to be different amongst everyone. And this is why this is never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, and I think it's honest. It's 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 actually even a little bit like it's a little bit rude and uh, kind of weird to when people ask you for signals and shit like that anyways um so yes you know all those things happening right now uh and that is quite exciting for bitcoin what's more important or what's just as important to me actually is the fact that we do see some of the other alts already printing higher highs in fact looking at mrs litecoin over here she has officially printed a higher high over the november breakdown uh above um above what was it like 66 and three quarters or something like that and while we are kind of being uh, being stonewalled at the September highs, um, you know, I and, and I would actually be looking for a pullback here, probably back down to like 66, 67 bucks. Um, you know, it, it, it does look like the trend is very, very likely reverted. Also back above all major moving averages here, most notably the 200 simple and the 200 exponential moving average, which are pretty much consistent with each other right there. So what we have seen in the past uh, for for the market is that Litecoin has actually led the market out of, out of downward slumps to the upside. I mean, it, it made the first move to the upside back over here 
year in beginning of 2019 when Bitcoin was still kind of hanging in the $3,000 to $4,000 range, right? Anyways, looking at this area right in over here, you know, could it do the same thing? It is showing more, it, it actually is showing more momentum um, signals in comparison to Bitcoin and getting a higher high printed and confirmed um, even on a closing basis, not just a tick above, but a closing basis, uh, I think is pretty damn powerful within this region. Um, uh, I'm curious if Mr. Buterall has done the same thing. It has uh, 190, 195 was our last prior high on a tick basis. We got 195.81. Hold on, this is going to be very, very close. 185 spot 21. Holy shit, it did have it uh, just barely. Just, just fucking barely. I don't feel too confident about this one, to be honest with you, though. Um, the reason being because on a closing basis, it did not close above. And on a wick basis, it's a little bit difficult you could depending upon how you kind of look at it in fact i could make the argument that really 199 is where you're looking for on a wick basis so i'm going to hold off on that one but we do see typically that uh, mr buterall falls everyone's getting very excited about mr buterall right now which is kind of funny to me because mr buterall has been the laggard of this market that's not a good sign that's not a good sign usually the weak ones rally last so it would imply that mr buterall is on the weaker side in comparison to litecoin which is a little bit stronger than bitcoin right now um so all the ones that you see that uh you know that you that you're seeing uh rally right now you know, after Litecoin had kind of already made its move and after Bitcoin had already kind of made its move are like tier three, essentially. So the Litecoins and the ones that moved with Litecoins, that would be tier one, Bitcoin and the ones that moved with Bitcoin, tier two, and then tier three are the ones that are moving now. And believe me, there will be more tiers after that. It's not like this is the last tier and this one's shit. No, it's not. That's not true. Obviously, you know, uh, Buterol is probably, probably more legitimate than, you know, of most things that are outside of like the top 10 in coin market market ship cap um but uh but that's typically how markets move you know the junk rallies last as the saying goes and uh and i don't think that we've even really seen the junk rally yet to be quite honest with you um in fact if we're going to go look at uh, bitcoin dominance chart a little bit later and uh it's there is a lot to be said about that anyways um okay we've already been here 21 minutes uh what else do we want to say um let's go back to bitcoin i want to make sure that i get all my thoughts out uh, properly over here um weekly historical volatility percentile is uh dastardly low let's actually go over here to stamp get a little bit more of a historical reference point for this um yeah we're going to be looking at a, a a market shattering moment um probably in this next month maximum two months uh there have been one two three times that historical volatility percentile on a weekly has been lower than where it is right now and it's realistically i mean it's in single digits already and we're talking about a difference between like one and two so it's not all that much and if you know what historical volatility percentile even means uh then you know that that's like you know it's basically telling you that there is oh man I want to I want to make sure that I get this uh, explanation correct, but it's basically saying that you know this is in the second percentile, or assuming that we're on a two read right now. Sorry, we're on a three read, so it's, we're in the third percentile of a um, you know of of you know of a move with regards to the weekly. Sorry, let me get this out properly. Jesus Christ, because I know Bali's listening. He's gonna he's gonna rip me a new one. Um, but we are in the third percentile of. Uh, in in relation to the past moves with regards to volatility. So that means that it is really fucking low comparatively. Anyways, um, what we're looking at right here and to put this in perspective, now to actually make this actionable, when we were lower on weekly historical volatility percentile, uh, we're, we're, we're once again talking about moves that happened here. Uh, this is March of 2019. Remember March 2019? That was before the breakout from about 4,000 all the way to 14,000. Um, before that, we saw the we saw historic fall to percentile a little bit lower than where we are right now. This was October 2016. That was leading out of this space right here before the next two years of straight upwards action from literally $700 to uh, about 20,000 um, bucks. The only time before that that we were even lower than where we are right now, or sorry, there's two more. There's, uh, wait, we got April 2016, or September, April 2016, same thing. Uh, June 2015 right here um, leading up for this massive change massive reversal now it is um, I I do feel a little bit hold on there's there, there's got to be one example of a downwards move Th this one kind of is right here um, November 2018 before 6,000 to 3,000 so I, I just want to show that it's not it's not it's not um, it, it's it's not deciding a direction what it is doing it is telling you that big massive pieces of price action are coming not that we're always intended to go up it can come to the downside in fact in in, in fact coming from traditional markets volatility going up typically does mean downside imminent you know you expect volatile or 
sorry, you expect volatility to kind of uh, come down during upwards markets and to go up during downwards markets. And by, you know, intuitively, you know where that's true because, well, what's happening during downwards market? People are panicking. People aren't really panicking during upwards markets. So volatility just goes down naturally. You know, people are just kind of very content. And usually when volatility gets very, very low, that's when, that's when the alarm bell starts ringing, you know? and vice versa for you know for the other side typically when volatility spikes like you see right here that's your major reversal point point. and funnily enough on bitcoin in bitcoin land it typically comes on the highs which is which is pretty much backwards what we see in traditional marks but uh, but fair enough i would imagine that 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 comes a little bit more in line longer term anyways um okay cool so all right um uh i, I don't really have anything new to say about traditional marks but i do want to i do want to state this I, I do think that traditional marks are going to open up today uh but that that op that up open probably gets sold into um you know the you know uh, it, it could it could open up and rally up to i think very likely probably like 324 and a half uh maybe even as much as like 325 and a half but i'd be looking for this downtrend to actually continue a little bit more and probably base once again off 320 if 320 breaks i'd look for a move down to 315 uh, markets look like they want to come down further to me. This is toppy-ish behavior. The, the daily is very obviously bearish. Um, so I do think that any rally today does get uh, does get pushed back, especially as long as especially as long as the rally fails to get back above about 327-ish region um, from a weekly from a weekly basis. That is nasty, very nasty. Um, and we're going to see all momentum momentum also just turn down at the same time. So I do think that uh, the mark's in for its, like, its first major pullback. And tentatively speaking, I think that it probably finds a bottom a little bit more medium to long term. Not happening today, not happening this week, but, you know, in the coming weeks, uh, may, you know, may, maybe in the coming months, somewhere down around 315. And if that area fails, then we got some big problems because uh, 305 is going to be the next next major stop macro. Um, anyways, uh, okay, cool. So um, we looked at the daily, we looked at the weekly, we looked at the lower time frames, but we actually haven't really looked at the two-day, three-day. And what are we looking at over here? Two-day looks a little bit more toppy. Um, do we have bearish divergence present? We do not, so that's good. Um, I don't really have anything else to add on to it other than that. Uh, Three-day, um, do we have any bear? No, we don't have any bearish divergence. Of course not if it's not present on the uh, two-day. You know, it's still stair stepping its way up. The question to me really is, is, is Bitcoin going to come back down to about, you know, 8,900-ish region and set in a higher low on the daily first before giving a, before giving a le legitimate try to the upside? Or does it push on through, uh, push on through here? And technically, my bias should be that, it, the, you know, the next move is going to be the upside as long as we're above 92.50 as that is the pivotal moment to the uh, pivotal point to the downside um in the trend and you know the trend is obviously very up right here as well um so other than that i don't really have too much to add and i don't really want to make this any more complicated than it needs to be because yesterday was for all the all the fun stuff i suppose so definitely go check out yesterday's video and long-term analysis playlist as uh, that's going to go into more detail uh, on this video i want to fix i want to keep it more focused on more actionable things for stuff that's you know perhaps more likely to happen um today um going back into it right and over here you know uh, to kind of wrap up my thoughts on Bitcoin, I do think that we're going to test the downside support of this once again. I do think that I actually do think that it holds up, um, but there are a few things happening here, and I want to make sure that they're happening on CMEs first. So let's see before I say anything silly. Okay, they're not actually happening on CMEs. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So what that likely aligns with is filling out the range a little bit more. Um, CMEs are not showing the CMEs are not showing the same sort of uh, same sort of pressure to the downside as spot is, and uh, actually let's do a little bit more analysis on CMEs. And by the way, for all the people wondering, um, yes, the gap has been there is there is no fucking gap. It was filled immediately. Uh, <laughs> classic shit. And that's why I was saying that we probably hang around three uh, ninety three fifty ish region coming into CME open from yesterday night. So a little bit of a gimme trade right there in hindsight, of course. But uh, that's fucking hindsight, and people hate that. Anyways, um, for future reference, of course. Anyways, um, okay, so I am curious how the lower time frames are operating here. It, it, okay, so CMEs do kind of agree with spot price action that we do get another swipe lower, but I don't think that we're going to have the momentum to break it. Uh, let's look at 12 hour. 12 hour just coming down right now, kind of nasty. Do we have that same bearish divergence here? We do. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, 9,000 9, is kind of staring us in the face. The more I look at this, the more I do think that Bitcoin does come down to 9,000 or sorry, uh, 8,900, 9,000 ish region. Um, but still, I'd like to I'd like to respect structure first. So structure first, then then oscillators. Um, but yeah, it it, it 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 does look like it's 
pretty reasonable in fact um but realistically i, I want to be i want to be very forthright when i'm feeling a certain way um the last like few weeks or sorry like month and a half to two months of price action i felt pretty confident about price action when i was stating things right here i don't I mean, you know, I have my biases, but I am I in a trade right now? No, I'm not. I'm not interested in trading, and I'm not interested in trading this right now. I don't feel as confident right here, so I want to be very straightforward with that. Um, but the more I look at it, the more it does look like it wants to pop back down and test around, like on CMEs around 90.50, which would probably put spot somewhere around 8,900 ish region, um, and that's where I'd kind of look for the next sort of major low to be put in, most likely, most likely. Anyways, um, okay. So with all of the ranges in mind, remember the uh, the blue boxes right here, the blue boxes of peace and prosperity between 9250 9600 right here uh, to the downside would be about 8900 and then 9850 to the upside a little bit prior let's go match that up with the expected moves chart and see what's a little bit more likely from a historical volatility percentile uh, standpoint and i've been finding a lot more use on the 12 hour chart for this one um i think that it's just more in line with when the daily closes from this from this point in time but uh looking at this it would say that it's less than 16 percent chance for us to break 9250 um to the downside today before daily close by the same token it is less than 16% chance to, to even get back above 9,500 from uh, from yesterday's, um, sorry, for, uh, uh, by today's daily close. I'm curious what the daily ranges are showing right now. Daily range is actually pretty damn similar, funnily enough, uh, creeping up around 9,200 ish region for the downside and for the upside, 9,550. More importantly, you're seeing all the all the rings collapse on each other. So what is that telling us? It's telling us that we're contracting here. We're, we are in a consolidation area-ish phase and a big move is coming. Um, so fair enough. Um, you know, to the upside, it would be a little bit less. Well, sorry, to the downside, it's, it's quite unlikely that we actually do break that critical 8,900-ish region. Because remember, 8,900 really does uh, really does change the biases from the daily time frame to bearish, uh, you know, a little bit more medium term. Um, whereas right now, look at it as level support. But you do see that, you know, the 8,900-ish level is essentially between the second and third standard deviation to the downside. So it's a very, very low chance, probably somewhere around less than 1% 1, 1 chance, essentially. Um, so it's very unlikely to happen, well, at least today. By the same token, the upside um the first innovation is coming in right around about 95 50 9600 ish region so it is a little bit more likely that we break out to the upside that is a 16 percent chance to break out um in that direction uh from today's price action so uh that is interesting as well the the probabilities are are are, are, in, are, are in the upside's direction um with that in mind but then again you look at the first innovation to the downside and it's a little bit below 9200 so you know that's you know that is the gatekeeper for this guy right around here um so fair enough you know actually it'd, i guess it'd be a little more neutral than anything but uh but fair enough you know i'll, I'll you know i'll leave it as such i do want to i do want to go back on over here just for a second just because this is still relevant you know whether you look at this as a falling channel or a falling wedge the measure move from both of them um more conservatively would be around 10.3 and more aggressively would be around uh, 11 5 to 12 thousand and i do think that that you know that in line with the way that the with the made with the way that the major movement average is kind of set up right now is you know is is of interest here is is you know is of great interest um just because it does kind of help formulate that bias to the upside although you know at the end of the day am i a pattern trader Fuck no i'm not anyways okay cool so let's go check out bitcoin dominance or sorry let's go actually go check out total market cap really quick total market cap also has made a higher high it closed on a higher high from a weekly basis and looks to me like it wants some more in fact the the the, the total market cap chart is actually really really good to be fair i used to really dislike it and disregard it but um the more that i look at it the more that i realize i am i'm just wrong about that i'm just straight up wrong about it um it's gotten a lot of things right here and uh long term it would say that well we've reverted the trend and weekly rsi is looking more or less healthy we even see weekly stokes getting back up there again back into the are back going to be testing the bullish controls on relatively soon and longer term funnily enough the market as a whole is in a contraction phase here is in a contraction phase coming in from the twenty thousand dollar highs on bitcoin and we probably can expect a major break somewhere around here which would be in a year and a half but where's my one hundred thousand dollar bitcoin today what the fuck I've been reading all kinds of YouTube thumbnails and all kinds of YouTube titles, and I was guaranteed, guaranteed, $100,000 Bitcoin today. What the fuck? What does that mean, imminent? What does that mean, happening now? What does that mean, question mark? <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Just uh, I, and, and I certainly do clickbait uh, thumbnails as well. Please understand that if you're coming to this channel, the thumbnails have very little to do with the actual content. We do the thumbnails and we do the titles to get everyone in here. And then we fucking waterboard your face with informations, which is usually not going to be saying something along the lines of $100,000 today. Bitcoin guaranteed imminent breakout today. Bull market confirmed. Go fuck yourself. You pussy. Okay, and in other news, <laughs> happy Monday to you as well. Um, let's go check out uh, Bitcoin dominance for a second before I have another autistic outrage. Um, looking at Bitcoin dominance, we are breaking down. We're going to take the southern road on here. All coins are going to be bullish. All coins are going to very, very likely rally. Um, you know, is there, you know, it, uh, sorry, is there a bounce back up to maybe test around 68% again? Maybe yes. I very, very likely would look for it to get rejected and very likely come all the way down here. This one's been whipped around quite a bit, um, but I do think that is starting to really choose a direction and the direction is to the south side. And uh, what I should have been paying attention to was the weekly fucking jewel. God damn, my own, my own fucking tool telling me to be bearish when I was when, uh, when I was looking for it to be bullish here and I'm just very embarrassed by that but uh, at the end of the day that's why I trust my t that's why I trust my indicators more than I trust my fucking thoughts um, so yeah altcoins probably going to be rallying up altcoins probably going to have a party altcoins and this is altcoins versus satoshis which you know satoshis satoshi value can go up uh, just as long as the altcoin value is going up in relation to bitcoin value versus US dollar of course so that could that you know that doesn't necessarily mean that bitcoin's guaranteed to go up here it could also go down um it's just they go down less um so fair enough anyways um okay don't really have anything to talk about or actually we could we could briefly talk about forex it is open for the trading week um dollar yen we are getting that bounce that we spoke about the bounce mm, is it going to be rejected here is a real question um do we have any bullish divergence forming? Potentially bullish divergence forming. So uh, I would wait for this day to end up. If it does end above the 200 simple, we are gonna have a chance to actually confirm bullish divergence here. And I'd look for an extension of this move to like 109, uh, but still top heavy here. The weekly is bearish. The weekly probably does come back down lower. And I do think that ultimately it's gonna find its way down to 107 spot seven region. Uh, pound yen, what are we looking at here? Uh, this chart is fucking difficult. This one's fucking difficult. It's still trading sideways. I, you know, it's kind of, kind of, remi kind of reminiscent of Bitcoin going in the sideways range. It's like, as long as it's going sideways here, you technically should be more on the bullish side, but it's, I don't feel that way. Um, I don't feel that way. And I, 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 I would be happy not to trade this. <laughs> that's, that, that's my real analysis on it. <laughs> I ain't trading it. Uh, 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 gold getting a little bit of a pullback here. I do think that this is probably going to end up just being a pullback. I do think that it ultimately finds its way back up into this blue box territory, 1610 to 1630 ish region. We do see daily Stokes still up. We do see daily RSI looking actually showing some significant bearish divergence and daily jewel is under pressure hold on i might be wrong uh, you know if, if i'm going to be wrong about this one i look for uh what is this the 30th of january's uh low to be taken out to the downside and then um and then i look for a move uh, at the very least back down to like 1560 but perhaps even all the way back down here um i don't feel that strong how did the monthly close monthly close really good yes so pullback probably is you know probably does bounce it and probably does get continuation or at least a continuation try to the upside um, what else do we have? Euro dollar. Euro. Oh man. Euro dollar crumbling. Fucking crumbling. Okay. So we did get the, you know, we did get the pullback that we were looking or sorry, the bounce that we were looking for here, um, off this, uh, what was it? 110 level. And the question is, does it get another, tr does it get another try up to the 200 simple at 111 and a quarter? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The, what I can say though, is that the weekly and monthly are, are, or sorry, the monthly is atrocious. The weekly is okay. So that could align with like maybe another try back up around 111 and a quarter, but I would be looking for it to get rejected. Um, so yeah. Anyways, um, I think that's pretty much going to do it. I think it's time to get on over to Bitcoin. I realize this video is already 40 minutes, so it's definitely not shorter. So go fuck yourself. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, oh, I also forgot to mention that uh, on the monthly, funnily enough, that uh, 10 simple moon average is right around 8950-ish region, kind of similar to that 8900-ish region. So if we did have a pullback down around there, I would be looking for it to likely get picked up. Monthly RSI back above the exponential as well, so I do like that. And more or less... What we're looking at here is pretty much the same analysis of what we've been looking at for the past um, for the past uh, few days. Uh, blue boxes of peace and prosperity providing all of the scalping needs for right now. 
any sort of a four hour total close or even a two hour total close below 90, uh, 92.50, bad, any, uh, well, bad down to about 8,900 ish region, 89.50, uh, very, very likely. By the same token, any sort of a four hour total close, even above like 95.50 probably does it for me. I'd look for a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a move to be initiated to about 98.50 ish region, probably pull back from there and then likely another try higher into the five digits. Um, technically speaking, I am bullish. Uh, sorry, I am bull bullishly biased as long as we're above 92.50. Um, but I'm not interested in holding positions in this region. I'm interested in trading ranges. So with all of that said, I want to wish you well. I will very likely be on Twitch later today, which I'm really, really excited about. And uh, take care. Until next time.